Hello beautiful friends, my name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. It is time for the first round of my newly updated TBR game, the My Bad TBR game. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, if you missed it, I did post an entire video dedicated to the newly updated board and rules for this game, and I will link it up into the cards for you so you can check it out if you are interested. I did that so when I was filming this TBR, I could actually focus on the gameplay and didn't have to dedicate a significant portion of the video to those rules and changes. So if you are interested, please go ahead and check out that video so that you will know all of the updated rules and maybe a little bit less confused during gameplay. All right, that's really all the preamble that I have, so let's go ahead and get into the game. All right, everyone. So I have my game board set up for the new round of the My Bad TBR game. I think that I'm going to make six the standard number of draws that I do each round. I typically read probably around 10 books every single month and so drawing six allows me some flexibility and I'll be able to read any of the other books I must get to in the month. I do have a handful of those in November that I do want to get to. So six feels like a pretty reasonable number. Now of course not every draw is going to lead to a book that I have to read. So depending on how the cards draw I may end up choosing to select more just to make sure that I'm getting enough on my TBR. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do draw number one. Okay, so we have to move six and six is just a standard move forward. So now I have to select which color I will be moving. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and that is to read a book box book. So basically any book that has come my way in a book box like book of the month, I have to select one of those books to read. All right, so my first draw was the number six and the color red, and so I had to move one of my red pawns forward six, and I landed on book box. That means I get to choose a book that was sent to me in one of my bookish subscriptions. For this month, I decided to go ahead and select The Shadows by Alex North. This, I think, at this point is probably one of the oldest book of the month books that I have on my shelves. This is one that I've kept because I read The Whisper Man by Alex North. I had actually gotten this one before I had read The Whisper Man and I enjoyed The Whisper Man enough that I wanted to go ahead and keep this one. This is from July of 2020 so it is over two years old at this point and I feel like it's time to go ahead and get it out of the way. I believe this follows a main character who when he was younger had a small group of friends and one of them ended up turning out to be a murderer and one of his victims was their mutual friend and so he's kind of been haunted and traumatized by that event and one of the most awful things about it was that the friend who did the murdering was never seen again and since that time there has been several copycat killers going around and our main character actually has to return to his hometown to take care of his alien mother which he is not happy about and of course when he gets there there is another copycat killer and our main character's mother is convinced that there is somebody following her son that there's somebody in the house and so he I think starts to wonder if maybe his friend has returned so it definitely sounds like it's going to have a dark, creepy, sinister vibe. And I'm interested to get into this primarily to see if I want to continue with Alex North as an author. Like I said, The Whisper Man was fine. It wasn't anything spectacular. I think I gave it a three, maybe 3.5 stars. I honestly don't remember anything about the book that I read. And so that's another reason why I really want to read this is because I don't want it hanging out on my shelves. I want to read it and see if I enjoy this more and may want to continue with Alex North as an author. And if not, I can go ahead and unhaul this and make sure I'm not selecting anything else from him in the future if he is featured on Book of the Month. So that's my reasoning behind this one. All right, draw number two. Okay, we have six again. Let me see what color I will be moving. I will be moving green this time, so let me go ahead and switch the board. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is a book club pick. Okay, so that is actually perfect because I already have a book club selection that I was trying to get to, so that actually doesn't add anything to my TBR. All right, next I drew another six, but this time green. So I moved forward six and landed on book club pick. So I'm casually part of a few book clubs. It's not like an in-person book club where you go attend or anything. They're all virtual book clubs. And so I can choose whether to participate or not. But there is a book club 
on Goodreads that I really much enjoy a lot of their selections. It's called The Bookworm Bitches. And for November, they are reading Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. Prior to it being the book club selection, I had only just heard of this book and I added it to my TBR because it sounded like it was going to be a very beautiful, touching story about a woman and an octopus, if you can believe it. So it follows our main character, Tova, and she has experienced her share of grief. Her longtime husband has just died. I believe Tova is probably in her 60s at this point. And she is also still grieving the loss of her son who 30 years ago when he was just 18 mysteriously vanished off a boat in the Puget Sound. Now she's just trying to keep herself busy and so she volunteers at the local aquarium and she actually forms a bond with this curmudgeonly octopus named Marcellus. I believe she actually works there. She's not a volunteer. She works the night shift and so when she's there like cleaning and mopping and stuff she is communicating with Marcellus and talking Talking to him. And of course, if you know anything about the octopus, you know that they are extremely intelligent creatures. I mean, hence the name, Remarkably Bright Creatures. They are very, very intelligent. And so Marcellus understands everything. He's very observant. And you actually get his perspective in this story, which I find very interesting. I already kind of have a picture in my head of what he sounds like. I feel like if I listen to the audiobook, he's going to sound like kind of a uppity British man. I don't know why, but that's just kind of the vibe I'm getting from him. And I feel like I'm just going to fall in love with him and I'm going to fall in love with the bond that he forms with Tova because I can imagine that being something that I myself do. As y'all know, I am a huge animal lover, animal advocate, and so I'm interested to see what Shelby Van Pelt does with this story. I admit that I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with institutions like aquariums and zoos because on the one hand, I know that they can be really life-saving for the wildlife within them, but on the other, you are holding animals captive. So I'm interested to see if that that is addressed in any way shape or form in this book to see what the situation is with Marcellus, how he ended up in the aquarium. I am hoping that it is going to be like a heartwarming and happy type of story. I really hope nothing happens to the octopus but I'm really fascinated to hear Marcellus's perspective and I'm looking forward to reading this one a lot. Okay draw number three. Okay, so we pulled a joker. So that means one of my colors has to go back to start. And now I have to select the lowest rated book on my TBR to read. So let's go ahead and determine what color is going back to start. Okay, poor blue hadn't even had a chance to move yet. And now he's going back to start. Okay, so we are now in a predicament with blue because now blue does not have any pawns on the playing field. So if I select a movement card and then blue and I can't move blue, I'm going to have to take a punishment of some kind. So let's hope that we can get blue back out on the board quickly. All right, so next I drew the Joker, which is basically this game's version of Sorry. And so one of my pawns, in this case blue, had to go back to start. And I have to read a book associated with the punishment. And on the card I drew, it was to read the lowest rated book on my TBR. After looking at Goodreads, it looks like the lowest rated book on my TBR is The Dilemma by B.A. Paris. I have it added to my TBR because I have enjoyed B.A. Paris in the past. I really enjoyed Behind Closed Doors. I think that was her debut novel. That's definitely been my favorite so far. I also enjoyed The Break down. I know people had problems with that because there was a lot of gaslighting in it, but I actually really enjoyed that. I did not like Bring Me Back hardly at all. So I'm kind of nervous about the fact that The Dilemma is the lowest rated book on my TBR. And after reading the synopsis and some of the comments on it, I think I understand why. So this book is following Livia and it is her 40th birthday. And so her husband, Adam, is throwing her a big party and everybody they love is supposed to be there except their daughter who is studying abroad. And Livia is actually not sad about this because she's recently just found out a secret about her daughter and she doesn't want her daughter to be there. She wants to be able to discuss the secret with her husband. Of course, Adam has a surprise of his own and he plans on flying in their daughter so she could be there for the party. But prior to her arrival, he learns some terrible news and he has to kind of determine whether or not he wants to actually share it with his wife before the party and potentially ruin the party and all of that. So from what I understand after kind of reading that synopsis and some of the comments, the biggest complaints about it are the fact that it sounds like this is going to hinge purely on miscommunication, which I hate. So this is a story that's only going to be able to be a longer story because the two main characters are not communicating with each other. And if they would have just communicated, it would not be a story. So right off the bat, I don't like that. 
I'm already having a problem with that. And it also sounds like people are upset because it's not a standard thriller like you would normally expect from B.A. Paris. It's more of a family drama, which I personally don't have a problem with. Yes, I would be going into this expecting more of a mystery thriller, which is what you get from B.A. Paris, but I'm okay with a family drama if it's done well. So I mean, I'm going to see whether or not I agree that it should be the lowest rated book on my TBR. So I'm kind of nervous about this. I think I'm probably going to try to bust it out first thing in November and just get it out of the way just in case I really don't like it. All right, draw number four. All right, so we have an eight and now we just have to determine what pawn color I will be moving. And it is yellow. All right. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Read a book with yellow on the cover. All right, next I drew a number eight and yellow. So I moved my yellow pawn forward eight and landed on the prompt to read a book with yellow on the cover. And for that, I think I'm gonna go ahead and read Good Night Beautiful by Amy Malloy. This is another thriller that has been sitting on my shelves for a little while that I'm excited to go ahead and get to. From what I understand, this follows newlywed couple, Annie and Sam, and they are leaving the big city for a more quiet life upstate. But once this happens, Annie finds herself a little bit unsatisfied because she's basically doing nothing but staying at home while Sam, who's a therapist, runs his practice out of his home office. But what Sam doesn't know is that through a vent in their house, Annie is able to actually listen in on his sessions. Everything seems to be going on fine until this French girl shows up one day and then Sam disappears. So I think this is really going to be following Annie as she's trying to discover who that French girl is. Where did Sam go? Is he in trouble? Did he go willingly? This is definitely a domestic suspense novel and I am down for it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what Amy Malloy does with this one. Draw number five. Okay, I drew a two and red. And since I have two pawns of red still in start and no other pawn directly in front of start on that free space, I am going to go ahead and move one of those pawns to the free space. That way I don't have to add a book onto my TBR if I don't want to. And when I have to draw again, that is now only adding one book instead of two. Okay, so we're gonna move this guy out here onto start and we're gonna draw again because with drawing a two, you do have to draw again. All right, next I drew a number two and as you know, if you draw a number two, you can either move a pawn from start onto the free space or you can move forward too. I selected the color red and I did have the ability to move one of those pawns out onto start onto a free space. So I don't have to select a book for that one, but I do have to draw again because that is the punishment for drawing a number two. My draw after that was actually a jack card and a jack card allows me to skip a move. So I'm actually just gonna save that for the future and I have a move that I don't particularly wanna deal with at that time. All right, it is time for the last draw, but I only seem to have three books now added to my TBR. So I may draw again, let's see. All right, I drew a 10 and yellow and I only have one yellow guy so I can move forward 10 or backwards one. So let me turn the board around and see what our options are. Okay, so if I move backwards one, I could read a new release and what is 10? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Start a series. I think I'm gonna go ahead and move him there, but I was already planning on starting a series in November. That is actually one of those books that I was talking about that I wanted to get to. So that doesn't add anything to my TBR either. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one more time. All right, next I drew a 10 and a yellow. And so I decided to go ahead and move forward 10 rather than backwards one. This landed me on the prompt to start a series. And that worked out perfectly because I actually already had the intention of starting a series in November. And that is the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb, starting with Assassin's Apprentice. I recently purchased this beautiful illustrated edition that I want to go ahead and try to read physically in the month of November. I will be buddy reading this in the month of November. And I'm excited to go ahead and have somebody to read and talk about this book with. I'm still not entirely sure if I'm going to love it like a lot of other people do. This is a very classic series at this point and it is very well loved and I'm still very new to adult fantasy and so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to feel but I hope that I fall in love with these characters just like I've seen Becca from Becca and the Books or Cody from Cody's Book Corner do. So I'm very excited to get into this and to have a buddy to share my experience with. So this is going to be the series that I start with in November. Okay, we drew a six. Now let's see what color I will be moving. 
Okay, so I drew a blue and obviously I cannot move blue six. So because I'm kind of frozen with blue, I'm gonna go ahead and take a punishment. All right, and my last draw was a number six and blue. And since all of my pawns were in start, I couldn't actually move six. But because I can't move six, I have to take a punishment. I have this cup here full of punishment prompts and I'm gonna go ahead and reach my hand in, grab a prompt, and then I'm going to select a book based on this prompt. So I don't have anything pre-selected at this point. I wanted to go ahead and do this on camera. So let's go ahead and see what we've got. All right. Okay, so that is Potential Unhaul. So this is a book that is on the chopping block that I may wanna go ahead and unhaul. So let me see what I got for this. All right, so for this, I'm gonna choose Amy and Roger's Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. I, over the past couple of years, have been almost completely moving away from YA books. These days, I almost never intentionally pick up a YA, especially a YA contemporary. I'm still a little bit more willing to read like YA thrillers and YA fantasy, but not YA contemporary. And that's just because they don't typically give me the substance that I want from my books. However, one of the reasons why I still have Morgan Matson on my TBR shelf is because I've read three of her other books and I've really enjoyed them. And they all seem to contain harder hitting elements. And so I wanted to go ahead and keep these Morgan Matson books on my shelf. I do have this one and one other one on my TBR that I have not read. And similar to The Shadows with Alex North, I think that this is going to be like a deciding factor as to whether I feel like now in my current mindset with books, if I can continue with Morgan Matson. So I believe this follows our main character, Amy, who has to drive a car across the country to their new home in Connecticut, but she doesn't want to get behind the wheel. Ever since her dad passed away, she has been unable to drive. And so she has to go ahead and take this road trip with a 19 year old neighbor and friend of the family. And I think it's just about their journey and probably their bonding and everything they go through. And so you're following her in her grief as she's still mourning the loss of her dad and then now having to deal with this big, huge cross-country move and all of the changes that go along with that. So it sounds like something that might tug at your heartstrings. And that's what I'm really looking for in these contemporaries. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see if I love this and I want to continue with Morgan Madsen in the future. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are all the books that I plan to read in the month of November. I do have a couple of other books on my radar for November, but I don't really want to talk about them just because they are going to be for a video that I'm filming later on in November or December. So for right now, we have these four books plus The Dilemma by B.A. Paris and Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. All right, y'all, that is it. Those are all the books that I plan on reading in the month of November. I do have a couple of other books on my radar for November, but I'm not going to talk about them at this time just because they will be for a video that I plan on filming in November or December. So for right now, this is the stack that we're looking at plus The Dilemma by B.A. Paris and Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt. Please let me know if you have read any of the books on my November TBR and what you thought. Also, please let me know what you plan on reading in the month of November. I would love to know. I love chatting with you down in the comments. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I would sure love to see you in my next video. Bye guys.